Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to look at one more interesting topic that is Bezier Curves. But before starting, I would like to apologize for not being able to make videos for last one, one and half month. I was stuck with few things, but now that we are back, let's see that how can we master Bezier Curves. So in today's video, we will see that what are Bezier Curves, where do we need them, why do we use them, then what is the mathematics behind them, how are those curves actually made. And then how can we make those curves in Swift? What are the APIs that are available to us by Swift? And how Swift makes it really easy to play with Bezier curves and draw amazing shapes. So let's get started. We discussed that this is going to be the agent of this video. So let's take the first two points together that what is Bezier curve and where can we use it? So Bezier curve is just a curve like any other shape, any other curve that you see in your day to day life. It's just a curve. But then the point comes that why do we call it Bezier curve? What is special in that? And the answer is that it was invented by a mathematician named Pierre Bezier. He used to work with Renault Motors in all industries and he invented these curves actually a mathematical formula, an equation through which we can generate all of these curves by simply changing few of the parameters. So that is why they are called Bezier curves. And now comes the point that where do we use them? So they were invented for use in computer graphics and they are still being used in softwares like AutoCAD, CATIA, ProE and all other softwares which relates with designing something. And even in the mobile applications where we need to make some custom shape, maybe an infinity or maybe we want to uh, make some custom shape for our profile view just like this. Or when we want to make the logo, the icon of our application just like this, we can use Bezier curves. So it's needless to discuss that where can we use the Bezier curves? Well, they are actually everywhere in our applications. Whenever we need to make any custom shape, any custom drawing, Bezier curve is the solution. So let's not buy much time in this discussion. Instead, let's start building something. I was going through Dribble to find some screens to find some shapes which I can use as a use case for explaining the Bezier curves for this demo and I came across this. I realized that these two screens can be a good candidate for explaining the concepts of Bezier curve. So we will try to implement both of them, the first one the boarding pass and the second the aircraft shape. So let's take the boarding pass first because it is comparatively easier to implement and it will give you more insight of how Swift APIs can be used for implementing the curves for implementing the shapes. So let's go for the first one. Now here in this boarding pass screen, I want you to focus on boarding pass. So let's remove the other elements and just focus on the card. And in fact, in the card, I want you to focus on those two curves on those two arcs that is at the bottom of the card. Now for drawing it, you will have to imagine certain circular arcs, certain curves which are part of this shape. So if I put a grid on this, you can see that these two points, these are actually the center of two circles. If I choose these two points as the center of a circle and draw two circles around them, you will feel that these two arcs are nothing but two semicircles. Now this is all what we wanted to understand. You can imagine the same thing for the four corners where we are having four quarter circles, four sectors I would say, which are having comparatively a larger radius but eventually they are part of a circle. So this is what we needed to understand for drawing this shape. And the last thing that we need before starting the implementation is the Swift APIs that we will be using for drawing these shapes. So these are the three methods that we get from UI Bezier path. The first one is add line that we'll be using for drawing a straight line. Second one will be the add arc that we'll be using for drawing any arc, any part of the circle. And the third one is add curve that we'll be using for drawing any custom shape, any custom curve, which is not actually the part of any circle but it will have a more mathematics involved in that. So that we'll be using for drawing the shape of the aircraft that we saw earlier. Now let's get started. So now that we have understood the geometry behind that shape, that how that boarding pass view can be created, let's start coding it. And to keep the video short, I'll walk you through the code, I'll walk you through the approach and the geometry and everything else that we'll be using. But you don't worry about the code that will be on GitHub, so you can always clone it from there. Just try to understand that whatever we are doing, why we are doing it. So here I'm having this playground file, I'm having UI kit and playground support imported, but you will not need this playground support in the real life project because that will be an actual project. Now I'm having this class my view controller and then I have a custom view that is boarding pass view. So let me just uncomment these three lines and give it a run so that we can see our shape in this view and then we'll try to understand it. And here it is. So this is my custom view which I have named as boarding pass view. Now here I'm having nothing much just I, I just created a view gave it a background color and created an instance of my boarding pass view gave it a frame and that's it. Now let's see that what is actually going on this boarding pass view. So these are the two initializers which we need for creating a view programmatically. 
and now comes this point the setup view this is a method which is actually calling a method get path and this get path is doing all those computations for creating the path the entire geometry is there in this method so we will come to this setup view method later let's try to understand first that what this get path method is doing it is actually returning a ui bezier path because that is what we want internally that's our actually our shape so the first thing that I did here in this method get path is that I created an object of UI B0 path. Next, I have called this method move. Now this move method will not draw anything. It will just put your cursor. You can imagine that it will just put your pencil on the drawing sheet at some at some particular coordinate that you will be providing. And then from there, the drawing will start. So I have asked to move the cursor, the, the drawing pencil at some point and that point is 50 and 10. So here it would be some somewhere around here. So where the y is 10 and the x is 50 and then I have asked to draw a line. So as we discussed that add line will be used for drawing a line. I call the method add line and this will draw a line up to the point that will be specified by this parameter. So here again it's a CG point and then 260 and 10. So if you see here you can actually see that a line is being drawn at this point. Now what I need to do is that I need to make this this right curve this right top corner. So for that I'm using add arc method. Now I mentioned earlier that there are two methods add curve and add arc. Add arc method can be used when your shape when your curve is actually a part of a circle. And here I can see that this is one fourth of my circle. So if I imagine something like this, if you can just focus on the cursor, here would be the, the center of this arc of this circle so if I pass this point as the center and provide the radius along with it along with the angle from where I want to start the drawing the add arc method can actually draw that arc for me so what I'm doing here is that I am providing the center which is this point some imaginary point over here then I'm providing the radius 40 well these are the hard-coded values but in the actual project these all will be the relative values with regards to your width and height of the container view but just for understanding so this is my center and let's say my radius is 40 somewhere around here and then the start angle so now start angle can be you can imagine the start angle if you are drawing the shape clockwise or counterclockwise it will change so i am giving that my start angle would be 3 pi by 2 that is 270 degrees so i want my curve to be started from this point over here and then i want it to go all the way till here so the end angle would be zero because it is starting from zero 90 180 and 270 like that so it would be clockwise that's true now comes the next part that is this right edge so this is this is straightforward we are just calling the method add line and providing the, the coordinates of the end point now comes this semicircle for which we understood that we will have to imagine a circle over here whose center will be this point and then this will be a semicircle around it so the same method can be used the add arc because this arc is also a part of a circle it is actually a semicircle so I am providing the center which would be here on this line on my right edge and then I gave some radius we, you can always change this, these values you can play with them and then the start angle and the end angle just like the previous one. So I want my shape to start from 3 pi by 2 that is 270 degrees and then move in counterclockwise direction like this. So I am providing this end angle as pi by 2 that is 90 degrees so from 3 pi by 2 to pi by 2 and then clockwise as false because I want it to be drawn in counterclockwise way. Again the next thing it's as simple as the previous one the add line for this right edge and then for this bottom right right bottom curve we are again adding an arc similar to the one that we did for the right top corner we are having an add arc provided the center point provided the radius and then the start angle and end angle and then we want to make it clockwise or counterclockwise so for that we are passing the boolean true or false the bottom edge is again straightforward so so by now you would have understand that making this shape is really easy all we are doing is that we are just placing the lines we are just putting the lines providing the coordinates wherever we need an arc or a curved shape we are providing the center of that circle a circle of which this arc this curve is a part so we are providing the parameters of that, that particular circle, the center, the radius, the angle, start angle and end angle. And then we are proceeding like that. So this way you can see that this entire shape can be drawn. Now once we complete the shape, I mean we draw this last part, this left top curve. We have actually reached to the starting point. 
and whenever we want to complete our shape complete our drawing and for that we call the method close on the path object and of course we are returning the path from here so from this method get path we are returning a bezier path and that path is actually our shape now once we get our path all we need to do is just draw it and for that we can use the ca shape layer so that is what i'm using here and then i provided the line width the line color the stroke color so the white color and the line width is two so if you want to play around here you can also do that so if i change this to four and a stroke color to say maybe blue and if i give it a run again you will see the changes happening like that so all these things you can play around but the code geometry that was involved behind this shape was here and in fact you can do the other beautifications the other customizations also so like providing a gradient layer making it more colorful making it more attractive so just i mean that's not the part of the bezier curve bezier path but just because i want to explain you that how that card that voting pass view is is made so i'll just add a gradient here in this card before that let's reset it to the white color and comparatively the thinner line width so i'll revert the changes and give it a run and now i can add a gradient color to this view so for adding the gradient i have not done much this is the same code that we just saw i was creating a shape layer and then gave some stroke color line width then i created a gradient layer and in the gradient layer i just passed the frame the frame of my path and then i used the shape mask so i just provided the path the cg part to the shape mask and then i added both the layers the gradient layer and the shape layer to my layer so this was a really easy one it explained most of the concepts behind the geometry of the bezier curve now the second thing that is remaining is the add curve method because we saw that how add line work we saw that how add curve works and now we will see that how the add curve method works and for that we will have to go back to our second use case that was for the aircraft view so let's go there this is our aircraft view that we want to make using the add curve method so let's remove the unnecessary component first so that we can focus on the part on the view that we want to make now in this view we want to make the top curve the top part it will be this white curve that we'll be making and before drawing this let's understand the bezier curve in little more detail i won't be going deep into the mathematical formulas but at least we should know that what is the concept behind bezier curves what are the control points how the curve is actually drawn so let's have a look at it to learn about bezier curves to understand that how they work this is a really good resource i'll put the link in the description now through this website we will try to understand that how bezier curves are drawn so first of all bezier curves is defined by something called control points control point is a parameter which decides that how the curve will move so if you see this straight line it is not having any control point i mean there's just a start point and the end point and then there's a straight line between that the next curve that you see it is having one control point that is the point number two so one two and three and this is the curve and this control point is controlling the shape of the curve so a kind of convex hull is being created over here if you see the next curve it is having two control points so point number two is controlling this shape while point number three is controlling this shape and two convex hulls are being made by these two points point number two and point number three now in order to understand in further more detail let's see this animation first and then it will be really easy for us to understand so you see that this is how the curve is being drawn now the point number two is a control point and the algorithm says that if you draw a straight line from point one to the first control point and then from first control point to the second if it is there if it is not then just draw a line to the end point so we are having a having this brown line from point one to two and then from point two to point three and then there's a parameter called t now the value of this parameter moves between zero and one now you can choose any interval for changing the value of t so let's say that the value is 0.05 so the value of t will change in the fashion of 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15 and so on. Now by the time the t will reach from 0 to 1, you can imagine a point moving from this line, the point from point number 1 to point number 2 along this line from 1 to 2. And in the same time where t moving from 0 to 1, you should also imagine another point moving from control point 2 to the end point 3. And then if you draw a line between all those lines, I mean the movement of those points on the interval of 0 0.05, you will see that a curve is being generated so if i play this again you will see that a line can be drawn and the point on this line will draw the curve will decide the shape to understand it further you can consider the shape where the value of t is 0.25 and t is equal to 0.5 now at the time interval 0.25 here was a point on this line 1 to 2 and this was the point on line 2 to 3 now if you draw a line between these two points 
and the interval 0.25 on this blue line we will get a point for our curve similarly for the value of 0.5 we will get another point for our curve and then if we join all those points we will get our curve so this is how the values are changed and the curves are drawn but i understand that this is not very easy this is not a piece of cake to understand and then calculate the control point this way of course there are mathematical equations through which the control points can be calculated but still that is not so easy so for us to draw our shapes in our mobile applications there's a cheat there's a workaround and that workaround is this website that is or maybe any website which which helps you in calculating the control points any control point calculator will do so this is the one that i prefer the desmos so here you can see that this is the shape and you can play around in this grid you can play around with these control points you can play around with this uh, the grid itself the origin the end point and you can change the shape the way you want now this will give you an idea that where can be the control points for the shape that you require so for example our aircraft view the the header shape of our aircraft so if I imagine it this like this and then I just change the control points to something like this maybe I think that we can get our shape so this is kind of shape that we are looking for now of course here the values are 0 1 and the control points are corresponding to, to those values but you can always map them you can change them as per your requirements as per your frame so you can always change the values so if this 0 is changed to 100 this 0.5 will change to 150 1 will change to 200 and so on you can map the values but at least you will get an idea that where will be your control points for drawing the desired shape so that is what we are going to do here we will be using these values for the reference and then we'll map our coordinates our points accordingly and we'll draw the shape so let's go back to the xcode where we'll draw the shape using the easier path so like the previous one i am having this playground in which i am having the same view controller but instead of the boarding pass view now i'm having this custom class aircraft view so let's uncomment these three lines and let's give it a run to see our shape in the view and then we'll understand it now the same thing is done here for the init methods for drawing the shape and the setup view we are getting the path from the method get path that is returning the ui easier path and we are using the ca shape layer to draw that path and here in this get path method it is comparatively even more easier this time because what i have done is that i have started from this point that is the right bottom corner i called the method move to reach this point that is 230 and 520 in my grid then i called the method add line to draw a straight line the this bottom one again an add line to draw this line the left one but th that is at an angle so that's why there's a difference in the x coordinate you can see it it was 70 over here and it is 60 over here that's why it is appearing a little slant and then i called the method add curve so this is the method that we are calling for the first time and now let's see that what are the parameters it takes and the first parameter is 2 and it asks for the end point so this would be my end point i provided the coordinates of this point the other two parameters are control point 1 and control point 2 so i provided the coordinates of my two control points which I calculated on the basis of the Desmos calculator and then I just called the add line for drawing this line to close the circuit to complete the path and then I called the method close on the path object and return the path from here. So this is how I use the add curve method for drawing this curve. Now as per your need you can play with the curves, you can change the control points, the origin, the end point and the curves will change and it is really easy using these APIs that UI Bezier path has provided us. But if you want to understand the mathematics behind them, if you want to understand those equations, please put it in the comment and I'll try to cover them in next video on UIB Zier Path. So that's pretty much for this video. A new video comes every week, so you can consider subscribing to the channel. Let's write better code together. Happy coding. Stay safe.